Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I want to talk to you about doing a 3D effect on your photo for Facebook. Check it out. Here I am on Facebook, and this is a photo I shot years ago. And look at this, it's moving, and it's really cool effect. Now, this kind of effect can really help you get more exposure on social media. So it is vital because having more exposure, if you don't get more exposure as a photographer, you won't get deals with galleries, you won't get published, and you want to become the star you want to become. So listen up. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a really cool trick with one button where you can get the same effect on a photo like this. All right. Also, I'm going to show it to you how you can do this effect, the three effect with a composite. It's really cool. So let's get started. All right, so here I am in Photoshop. Now, the way this works is that you just have to give Facebook an information. You have to give the JPEG, the photo that you want to upload, and the depth map that goes with it. Now, what is a depth map? To make it simple, it's a black and white photo that has information of the the depths of different levels. It's something that I create and I make a very simple one. So for example, here on this portrait of this actor, you see how the background is black, how he is gray, and how the wall here is white. So closest to me is white, further away is black. So black, if you go if I go on this photo on Facebook, you see black is the sky behind him. Alright? And then grayish is kind of the middle element is him. And then very white, which is here, is the wall. And so then you get this effect of three dimensions because now Facebook knows, and this only works on Facebook for now or maybe a specialized website, but from a social media perspective, only Facebook does this technology. But I think it can really increase your exposure on Facebook. Oh, by the way, guys, like this video. Help me by liking this video. This way other people can get to see this video really helps a lot. Also, leave me a comment. Tell me what you would like to learn. Don't forget, I do two shows per week, Tuesday and Friday, and I need inspiration. And also, if you did not subscribe to this channel, by all means, smash that subscribe button. And don't forget the little bell so you get a notification every time I make a video. All right, so how do you create this depth map? Well, let's first start with this photo of the Arc de Triomphe. Let's start simple. This is just a JPEG. 2,500 pixels wide. Now, 2,500 is a size that I love for social media because some of my screens, my best screens, have pixel resolution of about 2,500 pixels. So I just have this rule where I put on social media files which are 2,500 pixel wide. That's just how I rock, and I find it's you know it's kind of the best ratio to get the best uh, result. Okay, so now we need to create basically. We need to create uh, three levels of depth on this photo. One for the sky and a tree, which would be very black. One for the Arc de Triomphe and uh, the, um, uh, this whole part here, which would be gray. And another one, which is white, which is here. So how do we do that? Well, let's press W to use the Quick Select uh, tool. Let's make it bigger by holding the Control and Alt key on your keyboard. And let's do the sky first. So I'm just going to paint on the sky. And I only want the sky. Now, I don't want the lamp. That's the problem. So you see, I painted everything, but now it selected also the lamp. So I can zoom in on the lamp. And by holding, going back to W, which is the Quick Select tool, if I hold on the Alt key, you see, I don't know if you can see that, but the, basically the uh, tool becomes like a minus. Let me make it smaller by using the Alt and Control. So I'm pressing Alt, and I'm just going to brush. I'm going to Alt brush the lamp so that it doesn't get selected. Okay, I did a very poor job, so I'm going to zoom in and just do a better job. Now, that's really important, especially for the lamp, that you have to get it right. So, W, so when you're outside, you want the sky, so plus, 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 and when you're inside, minus, and it just, you know, you have to go back and forth, back and forth until you nail it. I'm going to do this in accelerate mode so you can see. All right, so I'm done with the basic selection. It doesn't have to be super, super precise. I mean, the more precise you can do, the better the result will be, you know, the more time you want to invest into it. One quick trick, so once you've done like a basic selection with a quick select tool, one way to improve it, which is cool, is go to the select and mask option. And then you, I like to see it with the overlay. Overlay is just what is red is selected for me. And uh, basically, I can just click here on refine smart radius 
two pixel. And that's going to go through my entire selection and try to refine it a bit better. Uh, I can see here I missed a lot of things. So here is the tool that I was using, the plus. And I can just, oh, sorry. See, I made this mistake and you will do it too. It's actually minus. We're trying to select the sky. So I'm sorry, what is red is not selected in this. So it's basically the same tool. Uh, it's the same tool here. So you see what we have here is everything which is red is not selected. What all we want is a selection of the sky. I think that's gonna be good enough for this. So now I have a selection of the sky. That's what we call marching ants. So I wanna put this into pure black because that's gonna be the furthest away. So I'm gonna, just gonna create a new layer. And while this has been selected, I'm gonna press D for default colors. And you see now black is my foreign color. And then I'm gonna press option delete. And option delete fills the selection with the foreground color, which is black here. That's the foreground color, that's the background color. It's a cool shortcut. All right, so now I wanna make a selection of the Arc de Triomphe. Um, what do I want? I want the Arc de Triomphe and uh, I want everything but the lamp. So one thing to speed things up I can try is I can go here and I can go to my selection and I can invert it. So now I have selected all the bottom part of the photo. The lamp is selected. I don't want the lamp to be selected. So one way to do that, I'm just gonna click here on, uh, remember, minus on select. So I'm gonna minus out. So I don't want this to be selected. I don't want the Arc de Triomphe to be selected. So minus, voila. I basically want, okay, plus this. I want the, uh, oh, actually, sorry, I made a mistake. I want the Arc de Triomphe to be selected. This is all about the, I want everything. I want the Arc de Triomphe to be selected, except this sidewalk here and that lamp. So that's gonna be some work. So I'm gonna press the Alt key and I'm gonna unselect the sidewalk here. Oops, Command Z if it goes too far. Let's do it again. And then uh, plus here, I want this part to be selected, this part to be selected, this part to be selected, yeah. I want that. And I think I'm pretty good. Let's go inside here. So W. So remember, uh, I want this to be selected. This has to be selected. So plus. So now I'm making a selection of basically the uh, the Arc de Triomphe, the road, everything but the sky and but the lamp, which is the four running elements. Okay, which is good there. So that I got a good selection of that. So now I'm going to create a blank layer. And my foreground color, instead of being black, I'm just going to lift it up to some sort of middle gray, about in the middle here, okay? And then Alt and Command. Okay, so now all we have got left is basically the lamp and here. And I'll show you a really cool trick to do it very fast. Uh, you select the basic layer, you press Command A to select everything. And then you hold on the option, okay? And the Command key, I believe on Windows, is Alt and Control. And now if I click on this layer, you see there's a little minus. And I'm gonna minus out this selection and I'm gonna minus this selection. And normally all I got left is the lamp and here. Well, there's a bit of an issue there. That's fine, we can take the W's tool and I don't want this to be selected, so minus. Uh, I'm holding the Alt key, I can make the tool bigger. Holding the Alt key to take that out, I wanna make sure that I don't get this. But you see now I only have a selection of the bottom and the lamp, which is what I want. Oh, some of the lamp looks like it's missing, so that's fine. W, make sure you don't press Alt, just plus. This time we want to have the lamp. We want to have the lamp, something like that. Okay, and now I'm gonna create a new mask. And this time the foreground color, I'm gonna go all the way to white. So it's only three value, black, gray, and white. Okay, and three level of, of depths. Alt and control. Okay, so now I've got the three layers is basically my depths map. Uh, oh, I need to clean up, something is wrong there. Make sure you don't have, yeah, something is missing here on, on the lamp. So uh, what you can do is I can take a brush, small brush, make sure it's pure white, 100%. And I can just, oh, make sure it, the hardness is about 85. Yeah, I kind of missed that post. I wanna make sure. And again, it doesn't have to be so precise because the effect has anyways some little glitches, you know. It's kind of more like a show wave effect or something. Okay, now, so my lamp is white, my Arc de Triomphe and my street is gray and my sky is black. So that should work. So to export it, you go File, Export, Save for the web and save. I'm going to put it on the desk. I'm going to call this one Arc underscore depths. Now, very important for this to work 
your basic file, my basic file is going to be called arc.gpj and the depth map needs to be just arc underscore depth, D-E-P-T-H, that's it. So that's the depth map. Now I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to go to file, export, save for the web. And this time I'm going to call it just arc. I'm going to take out the depths and that's the format Facebook is expecting. All right, so let's go over to Facebook. And the first thing you need to do is to activate this option. It's kind of crazy. You have to type in Facebook 360, okay? Now, Facebook 360 is a page, that, and that's where it is. You have to like this page. If you don't like this page, Facebook doesn't give you the feature. I know it's crazy, but that's how it is. Okay, I've already done it. And once you've done that, all you have to do is go to photo and video like you would load a photo and video and take the arc.gpg and the arc underscore depths.gpg, click open. And because you gave it a depth map, look at it, boom, it's gonna say creating a 3D photo. It's gonna detect that it's a 3D photo and it's gonna do it for you. And here it is. And you can move your mouse around and you get this super cool 3D effect. I'm gonna show you another example, which is really fast, which is really cool is when you do composites. So composites, is uh, basically, um, you know, I uh, let me just show you the before and after. So I start here. I have a background. I have a foreground, which is the wall. And I have uh, Arthur, which is here. And then I have some special effects that I added on top of it. So same thing, uh, using the same technique, I, I created a layer for uh, Arthur. You know, so white here, gray for him, black for the for the for the background. So three colors, same idea. But it was very easy to select because they were already isolated on Photoshop. So, for example, to create uh, Arthur, all I had to do is create command click on on his layer, on that layer where he's alone, and then you know create an empty layer and fill it with gray, and you get the idea. And the result is this, pretty cool. Okay, now here is how you do it with one click with an iPhone. All you have to do is you take your iPhone, you make sure you go to, so I don't know how to do it with Android and if you know, please leave a comment because I don't have an Android phone. But with the iPhone, you need to have, I think an iPhone 8, 9 or 10. And you need to have the option to take the portrait because the portrait option creates a depth map. All you have to do is you just take a portrait with the portrait option, then you go to Facebook and you load, because it's a portrait, automatically you're gonna get the 3D effects which you see here. Pretty cool. All right guys, I just came up with my best course ever, the Fine Art Masterclass. Here is a little presentation in case you didn't see it. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm really happy to announce you that I have a new course coming out called the Fine Art Masterclass course. This is seven years in the making, actually even more if you take into account when I shot the photos. But basically the idea of this course is I'm gonna show you all the best photos of the six coffee table books that I've published over the last seven years. We are gonna start with the Paris book, black and white. I'm gonna show you some of my best shots, like this Arc de Triomphe photo that I retouched with Aurora HDR and Lightroom. This crazy panorama of the Eiffel Tower that is my most sold panorama of the Eiffel Tower in galleries. Then we're gonna do the New York book. On the New York book, I'm gonna show you so many projects. This beautiful black and white of Brooklyn, a metro station in black and white. I'm gonna show you the back cover of the book with this photo of Brooklyn and I'm gonna show you sky replacement with black and white of this foggy photo of the Manhattan Bridge. Then we're gonna to go to the Venice book. And on the Venice book, I'm gonna show you so many projects from carnival shots to extreme loan exposures to some of my most iconic photos of Venice before and afters, including vertoramas, including loan exposure with filters, everything, so many projects in Venice. Then we're gonna to go to the Los Angeles color book where I'm gonna show you lots of projects. Beverly Hills, colorful. I'm gonna show you how I did the cover of my book, which is not only the cover of my book, but it's also the cover of the State of California magazine. I'm gonna show you some projects from Venice Beach, some panoramas in downtown, some photos for the Malibu State Park. In all, you've got over 25 different projects. Then we're gonna to go to New York, and I'm gonna show you how I made the cover of my new New York book. Many projects, Central Park at Fall, uh, I'm gonna show you this amazing photo of Central Park, how to shoot at night, how to create really interesting vertoramas in the city. Last but not least, we're gonna do my Paris book where I'm gonna show you some crazy projects, including the cover, which was a very hard project, including my most famous HDR photo of the Eiffel Tower, including crazy 
HDR panoramas with different kind of colors and last but not least day to night kind of photography. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know in this course, including a business class on how to get a better exposure in the media, how to get published in magazines, how to get book deals, and how to get into galleries. So if you want to take your photography to the next level, if there's only one course you want to buy from me, that is a finite masterclass course. Not knowing how to shoot and knowing Lightroom and Photoshop can really make or break your career. I really want to help you to get to the next level. This is a perfect course for you. I'm sure you're going to love it. It's going to take your photography to the next level.